the forehead of your robot. In late November, I inherited a home, and was in the process of clearing what was left of the estate of my great aunt, who passed away, when I stumbled upon a very odd DVD. The box was badly damaged, but the disc was in a seemingly perfect condition. The mystery had piqued my interest, so I loaded it up into my DVD player to check it out. After about 30 seconds of a black screen, the text, Sammy the Cat, slowly rolled across the screen, followed by the year 2019 in a smaller font. This was dumbfounding, because my great aunt passed away in 2020, and we were only recently granted access to her estate. I'm told many of these DVDs were watched by a child she would babysit, when she still lived at home. She was at a nursing home from 2017 until her passing, so how would a DVD from 2019 find its way into the collection? After the title card, the screen quickly fades into white, the white fades into a shot of a lightly furnished, mostly empty room with a door to the left. Rather quickly however, a large cat enters the frame. The cat is prominently white, but has black patches and spots, an absurdly large Maine Coon, no, it appears to be a person in a cat costume. As the cat turns around, I notice the large cheeks, googly eyes, and stitches on the front portion of his body. The odd proportions of the costume lead me to believe it to be homemade. After turning around, the cat proceeds to stare in the direction of the camera, for what felt like minutes, until, again, the screen goes white. The screen suddenly cuts to the costumed man eating from a bowl, a bowl of seemingly raw meat. After emptying the bowl, the man leaves the frame, only to return about 30 seconds later, holding the hand of a masked woman. The woman was silent and reactionless, and I'd almost assume she were unconscious, if not for her footsteps alongside him. The man leads her to the bedside and sits her down. He sits down alongside her, still costumed. The man sat still for a moment, until he eventually started to twitch, seeming to reflect for quite a long time until eventually, the twitches turned into sharp erratic, but deliberate motions of body. The man is now slightly turned away from the woman, and is, once again, sat completely still. This must have lasted for multiple minutes, until, swiftly, he reaches backwards and grabs the woman by the neck. The woman lets out a shriek, so loud that the camera audio struggles to pick it up. A shriek so deafening, that the man shields his ears and yells indecipherably. The man stands up, also pulling her up involuntarily. The woman is dragged by her neck a few feet, then dropped. By this point, my heart is racing, and I am confused and in shock at what I am afraid I've found. This just felt too real and unhinged to be some sort of indie film, but filled with dread, I continued to watch it unfold. Little do I know however, I will soon wish I'd turned it off. After dropping the woman, the man frantically runs through a door to the left side of the main room, perhaps a small closet, because his right leg is still sticking out. When inside, he shuffles around for about 10 to 20 seconds, until he suddenly turns around to reveal a long barrel shotgun, pointed directly towards the woman. The woman, still blindfolded, is sitting on the floor unsettlingly silent. There is an overwhelming sense of hopelessness that flows through my body, as I watch her exist completely oblivious to what is pointed towards her. She isn't given the opportunity to see it coming. After standing for a moment, the man lowers the gun, and casually walks over to the camera and turns it off. The screen goes dark, and that is the last of the contents of the DVD. The woman wasn't harmed in the film, which was relieving, but I worried what came after the man turned off the camera. I worried about what I just found. After a few days and some hesitation, I decided to report the disc to the local police department. They took it for evidence, but I'd be lying if I said I'd heard anything back. I worry about what may have happened to the woman, and I would love the closure of knowing rather than the uneasy ignorance that I've lived in the midst of over these past couple weeks. I felt dread for what I hoped wasn't true, but felt could be. It was eating me alive, so yesterday, I decided to reach back into the box, where I found the original disc, because I knew I hadn't looked very thoroughly the first time. After anxiously sifting for about 30 seconds, a consternated shock is delivered through my entire body when I see it. 
to my dismay, I spotted yet another unlabeled damaged disc container sitting along the border of the box, but I couldn't bring myself to touch it, much less open it, and ever since then, I've been feeling uneasy. I've thought about disposing of it, so I don't have to deal with it, but I don't want to get rid of something that may potentially be the solution to a case. I'm very hesitant to go back to the police with it, because it could just be nothing, and I hope it is. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this second one, but I'll keep you updated. As far as the contents of the first one, every single detail is still drilled into my brain, and I've been unable to stop thinking about it ever since.